All right. Well, welcome to the Farm Traveler Podcast. Noah Berkson, how are you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so I'm excited to have you. You are with a cool company called Cash Rent, which is kind of this new craze, at least new because I'm learning about it, where people can invest in farmland. And so tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of how Cash Rent kind of started. Yeah, so uh, Cash Rent, we are a dual-sided land leasing marketplace. Um, So we allow landowners who own farmland and want to cash rent it out. Um, to not only determine the fair market value of their land, but then also put it up for auction. Uh, And on the other side of it, for farmers who are looking to grow their operations and cash rent from other people uh, to find land that's available near them and to grow their operations that way. Um, From uh, from a personal standpoint, I grew up in Iowa, um, so Midwest kid, uh, eventually migrated to Chicago um, after having a business uh, that I started in college that brought me there. Um, have kind of been a technology entrepreneur, have, have started a, a multitude of different businesses in the tech space, um, from a pharmaceutical tech business to a software development company, uh, to a property analytics business, uh, and now uh, now in the, uh, in the ag tech space with cash rent. Gotcha. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I, I love learning more about these companies like you guys, where, I mean, you're bringing so much technology into the ag space, and a lot of people like your average consumer thinks that ag is kind of just cow, sows and plows and there's not much technology in it. And so so what is cash rent all about? You're, you're kind of about leasing land um, from farmers and investors and stuff like that. So where did the whole kind of where did the whole inspiration and process of cash rent come from? Yeah, certainly. Uh, you know, I think that just as a whole, um, the agricultural community is, has, uh, has been lagging behind from a technology perspective. Um, there's a lot of fragmentation and kind of the key point of fragmentation that we saw uh, was understanding fair market value of land from a cash rental basis. So not from the basis of, hey, I'm purchasing this farmland, but from the basis of, hey, I'm either going to rent this out to somebody to farm that land um, on a cash rental agreement. Uh, both from the landowner perspective and the farmer uh, perspective. So as we looked around, there just wasn't anything that was out there that was understanding fair market value from a cash rental perspective. So my uh, my co-founder, Chris Bauman, he'd bought a hobby farm. And uh, when he bought it, he was going to do a crop share agreement. Um, he didn't really know what cash rent was. And he just said, hey, I'll do a crop share agreement. So he talked to his neighbor. Uh, his neighbor said a guy down the road would do a crop share with you. He he talked to that guy and and they got an agreement in place. And after about a year, Chris was like, you know, I just don't really know about these inputs. Um, there's a lot of input costs and, you know, the yields and the outputs, like they're, they're not great. Um, so he went back to that neighbor and said, hey, can we move this to a cash rental agreement? Uh, as in, hey, you're going to pay me this price per acre uh, to cash rent the ground. And his neighbor said, great. Yeah, uh, I'll pay you $180 an acre. And Chris said, all right, let me, you know, let me go do my research and make sure that's that's correct. And he went out and uh, realized there was no tool to do that to understand the fair market value. So um, he was looking at you know some some fragmented data sources, looking at like University of Illinois, for instance, puts out um, puts out some of that data, but just couldn't find anything recent. Um, and so as he did his own research and kind of cobbled it together, he came and realized that you know I think I should be getting like 280 an acre. Um, and so he went back to that went back to the guy uh, who was he was doing the crop share with and said, hey, it looks like it's actually valued at around 280 an acre and the guy said, great, I'll give you $180 an acre for it. Um, and he was just kind of in this awkward situation, which was, I, you know, I, I, there's nothing I can do about it. Um, and he realized that this was really a problem, uh, went and chatted with one of his childhood best friends, uh, Brad Belzer, who actually owned a land brokerage uh, in Peoria as well. And Brad said, hey, this is a very big problem. Uh, no one really knows what their land's worth. Uh, so we set out to change that. That's awesome. Yeah, that's so funny that he came back that he had a two hundred and eighty um, dollars per acre, and the guy was still like, "Nope, hundred eighty, not not budging on that." So, yeah, I mean, and, does it? Or go ahead. I, don't know, I was going to say, and you know, that really just speaks to the fragmentation. You know, I think every day now we're seeing uh, people put in. We have something called a cash rent estimate, which is something that people fill out uh, to understand what their land's worth. So basically, they sele- they type in their address, um, they'll select their parcel of land and then outline the tillable acreage of their land. And from that, uh, we have a proprietary algorithm that determines the fair market value. Um, it gives them a range, but what we're finding, and we're just seeing this every day is people are putting in cash rent estimates and, you know, the, the value that we're spitting out compared to the, what they're currently getting is, is there's a enormous margin between the two. Uh, you know, we've seen on average the the average person that cash rents their land through us 
is getting 26.5% more uh, from a dollar perspective compared to what they were previously getting. So, uh, you know, I think it really just speaks to the fragmentation of the industry and that it really is a problem. Yeah, that's a pretty big margin. I saw that 26.5%. Um, would you say that the people that are interested in doing this, are they um, are they family farmers? Are they first-time farmers? Or what's kind of the breakdown there? I mean, do you have a lot more, like, I guess you could say smaller acreage farms interested in doing this as opposed to like the thousand acre farms that wouldn't be doing this? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really both. Um, even the, you know, thousand acre farms, the person that's, you know, is the landowner behind that farm, they may own a thousand acres. Uh, but every time that they've gone out to cash rent that land, they only have, let's say, one, two, three people that are bidding on it that are in the local community. Um, so what cash rent does as a marketplace is it expands that and you're able to find people that might be 20, 30, 40 miles outside of that geographic area that are great quality tenant farmers that just want to expand their operations and they'd be interested. So what that does is it brings more people to the table. Um, and so when people can see that, hey, we've been getting a lot less money than what this is really worth. Uh, it, you know, they're, they're very interested in that. So I, I would say, you know, it's, um, you know, it's people with a hundred acres, it's people with a thousand acres. Uh, we've, we've seen, it's been pretty agnostic so far. That's pretty good. So it's very diverse then. So, so how exactly does the online auction work? I haven't seen, I haven't watched any online auctions recently. And so really I'm just thinking like, you know, the speed talker guy that's like bidding really, really quickly and people throwing up the little paddle sign. So how exactly does your online auction process work? Yeah, so so it's not a live auction like that, uh, at, at least not yet. So the landowner actually determines the length of the auction. So they would put their property up for lease. They'd put in a minimum price. Um, they'd put in the lease terms, uh, and then they put it up for auction. And they may say that auction is going to run one week. That auction is going to run for a month. Uh, it's up to them at this point. Uh, so what they do is they put it up, and then farmers in those areas are notified, and around those geographical areas are notified that that land is available uh, for lease and they're able to bid on it. Um, it's closed off in the sense of you don't know who's bidding on your land. Uh, we actually on the back end do all of the diligence on those farmers. So uh, as farmers come into the platform, we want to guarantee that we're placing quality tenant farmers in there. Uh, so we're actually doing all of that background research uh, and those checks on, on the back end. But uh, until we get close to, hey, the landowner wants to close out that auction, uh, they don't know who's Bidding on the land, just uh, we, you know, we like the anonymity, and you know, I think farmers do too in those local communities. Gotcha. I can imagine. So, is there like an average lease um, time frame whenever somebody's leasing out the land, or does it just kind of differ per operation? Uh, yeah, I would say on the low end, it's it's a year. Um, we don't really see any of that. We typically see three year leases, uh, just because a year it's it's very transactional. There's no relationship being built and. You know, our goal at the end of the day is to facilitate a very long-term relationship between the landowner and the the tenant farmer. Gotcha. Okay. So, so the renter that owns the land and they're leasing out to a farmer. I mean, are there any like I don't know landlord issues going on? Like, have you had anybody where they've had to like go in there and, and um, I don't know maybe a bad leasee or something like that? Have there have have there been any kind of rental issues that you guys have experienced? Yeah. You know, we, we have not yet, but we're also, we're doing extensive diligence um, mm. and, and also from a contractual perspective, um, doing everything we can to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, you know, so I think that's really what differentiates us. You know, I think there's, there's some other players on the market uh, that are, that are kind of just trying to take advantage of the arbitrage uh, that's there and seeing like, Hey, there is a big price discrepancy between what people are getting and what it's worth. So how can we be the people to capture that? Our goal is to help the farmer, or sorry, the landowner actually capture that uh, that full ROI on their land. Um, so, you know, thus far, no, we haven't had that issue. And, you know, we're going to work uh, diligently to make sure that we don't. Gotcha. And so I saw on you guys' website, which is really cool. So um, I'm reading it right now. 40% of farmland in the U.S. is going to change hands in the next 10 years. And so in addition to that, um, with our growing population here in the U.S., I mean, cities are expanding, farmland is becoming, it, it's just shrinking by the day because of developments and just housing and residential areas going up. And so do you feel like this is going to be a good tool to combat that, to help farmers get accessible land as um, it's going to change hands and also with development going on in the, in the next, I don't know, 10, 20 years? Certainly. Yeah. Um, to, yeah. To answer your question, you know, there's there's a little over 900 million acres that will be changing hands uh, in the next 10 years. Um, a lot of that is going to be changing hands because if somebody is a, a landowner um, and instead of selling that land before, let's say they retire or pass away, they're you know giving that to somebody in their family typically. 
Uh, so you have a lot of people that will be first time landowners. They may not be from that community. They may not know anything about farming. They don't know what the land's worth. They don't know how to contractually go about, you know, doing those agreements. They don't know how to find the people to to cash rent their land. So, uh, you know, we we think that we can be the resource for those people to to educate them and you know have one platform that they can facilitate, you know, the the entire lease uh, of their land through uh, and start to build those uh, build those relationships with the farmers in their community. That's cool. I think your your viewpoint on that they're building relationships with this whole cash rent agreement is is really cool because I think the more I don't know farmers can work with community members that might not otherwise be involved in production agriculture. I think that's a win win for everybody. So that's really cool that you guys have that viewpoint on it. Yeah, yeah. You know, we've we've just seen uh, we've seen really positive receptivity from both landowners and farmers in the communities. And you know, one of the big uh, one of the big questions originally when we started this was you know, are farmers going to be upset because, you know, by nature of, of creating, you know, more, more people that are involved in the bidding process, it creates a more competitive bidding process. And, you know, typically you would look at that and say, well, that's going to drive up the price. But, you know, what we've found is not only do, do farmers really want to grow their operations and, and today uh, it's, it's very hard for them to, uh, unless they know the people directly in their community, like they don't have the resources to, to grow their operations. So, you know they're they're willing to to use the platform and excited to have access, uh, but also from you know from a from a fair market value perspective, like prices change on an annual basis. Um, you know, really even more frequently, but you know let's let's use annually as as kind of the reference point. Uh, prices fluctuate, right? Like input prices change, yields change, commodity prices change. So uh, you know uh, over the term of a three year lease, right? Like that value of that land may go down. So, you know, between that relationship between the farmer and the landowner, uh, it may be more beneficial to the farmer. It may be a, you know, a three-year lease at $330 an acre. And after those three years, they run another cash rent estimate and see, oh, well, it's around 300 an acre. So, you know, it, it can be beneficial to either the landowners or the farmers. But, you know, most importantly, it's, it's just transparent. Um, and that's, it's, that's is the, of the utmost importance is just people to know. And there's not, you know, there's nothing hidden in that. So. Uh, there's, you know, there's no dollars that are, that are being made on other side, on either side of the equation, uh, that, that aren't accounted for or, uh, aren't transparent. Right. Gotcha. That's awesome. And you know, that, that brought up a question. Um, I'm always amazed at how expensive farm equipment is. I mean, a combine is like minimum of 300, $300,000. And I mean, most like large farmers have two or three or four of them, not even mentioning sprayers and tractors and other stuff like that. Do you think you guys might maybe expand into something like that where you can, I don't know, rent out farm equipment like that? I mean, do you have any f- future plans there? I'm sure that would be a little bit complicated. You know, I, yeah, I don't know that that's I don't know that that's necessarily a direction. You know, I mean, what, what we do know, right, is is fixed prices for farmers are really high. Right. So so buying, you know, buying combines, farm equipment, just input costs are very high. The fixed costs are high. So. We do know they need to expand their operations, and it's becoming harder and harder to survive as a as a farmer with you know minimal acreage. Um, if you're just doing like you know a couple different farms that you might be cash running out, it makes it really hard to survive and to make money. Um, so what we want to do is just empower them to to whatever degree we can. Uh, you know, I think uh, you know down the line there may be um, you know we may be able to help on the financial side um, with you know showing data of what things are worth uh, to help them you know get loans or lines of credit, but other than that, I, I, you know, I don't foresee us getting into the, the farm equipment uh, industry. Gotcha. You got, no, that, 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 that totally makes sense. Um, all right. So um, it's 2020. Things are crazy. But as things are crazy, I think people are getting more and more into sustainability. And so this season two of the podcast, we've been covering like kind of the differences between organic and conventional production. And so are there any incentives for that you guys have seen for farmers to go I don't know, more sustainable or to go or- organic or do you guys not really kind of hands off on that aspect? Yeah, you know, we're we're handling more of the tip of the typical commodities. So like corn, wheat, soy. Uh, but, you know, what what we are seeing is, you know, I think sustainability is really becoming part of the relationships. Right. And I think, you know, we think of sustainability from the fact of are these are the farmers or the tenant farmers on these pieces of land leaving those properties better than the condition they found them in, Mm -hmm. Uh, which a lot of times in the more transactional leases where, 
you know, you have someone that's that's coming in for a year or something like that, they're not going to use they're not going to use the correct chemicals and inputs, and they're going to kind of uh, scapegoat the majority of costs they can to maximize profit. And we and we just we really don't believe in that. So you know, we're we're trying to help build those longer term relationships, and you know, I think a, a byproduct of that is is more sustainability. I gotcha. Yeah, I can imagine. I I think more and more farmers are going sustainable if they haven't already like in years past because i mean as more and more people are finding out like people have been doing um cover crops for years they've been doing no-till for years and those are proving to be like super duper sustainable so um what what are you guys hoping you're hoping that people continue to rent the same crops for or the same land area for years and years and years because they're building those relationships are there any tools essentially you guys are providing people where i don't know the communication gap is kind of not nearly as wide between the renter and the leasee and stuff like that yeah, I mean, certainly, you know, we we want to build those relationships and, you know, we don't want to be a middleman. We want to be the marketplace to facilitate that. So, you know, we want people to start those relationships. And, you know, we think from we think from the value that we're providing to the landowners that, you know, if they don't want to use us uh, past, you know, the initial lease term they would use with somebody that they're going to keep renting to, and then we must not be doing our job. So, you know, we we really do believe that we're providing a lot of value. Um, we help everything run through cash rent. So, you know, we have all the legal agreements, you know, people can, people can customize those to the terms that they need, you know, they do everything is executed through cash rent payments, you know, come around us. So, uh, you know, we want to just be able to facilitate everything and make it very easy and simple. Uh, and at the end of the day, you know, we, we hope that people will continue to use us past those initial lease agreements. Gotcha. So what state are you guys based in right now? And then how are you planning to go across the continental U.S.? Certainly. Yeah. So we we started uh, in Illinois. Uh, we're based in Illinois and Peoria. Uh, we then moved into Iowa. Um, and now after finishing those two seasons out, we're now planning to uh, to, pl- to expand across the rest of the U.S. Uh, in the next six months. So we'll be... Uh, We'll be live in every state uh, by mid, uh, you know, mid 2020. And we're really excited about that. So what's kind of going into the research behind like cropland? Because I know like per state, it's probably going to vary. So what kind of research have you guys been doing to make sure that you have the correct prices for um, that land area? Certainly, uh, you know, it's, it's just a vast amount of data that we're getting from uh, from a lot of sources. So, you know, that's, um, you know, that's really one of the barriers to entry to, to the industry and providing it is like, there is an, there's a mass amount of data. Uh, a lot of it is very fragmented. Uh, a lot of it is very old. Uh, what's out there is pretty outdated. So it's not only, it's not only aggregating all of the data, but also just finding correct data because uh, a lot of what you're finding, you know, they may have, uh, you know, they may have outputs or, you know, soil indexes, but this is from 2011, right. And we, you know, we're, we're sitting in, you know, we're sitting in uh, 2020. So, you know, I think that's, uh, you know, I, I think that's just speaks to the fragmentation too of, of technology overall in the agricultural industry. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, soil is always changing. Land ownership is always changing. And I saw that you guys provide um, uh, aerial photos and then soil maps of all the land. So how exactly do you guys kind of go about capturing that? I'm, I'm sure that there's like dated aerial photos that you guys have to maybe update or, or use drones or something. So what goes into that whole process? Yeah. So we, we, we leverage third parties uh, for the aerial maps and, and soil maps. Right. And then we do our own kind of custom overlays on top of those to provide as much data as possible. Uh, but, you know, we just wanted to make it as easy as possible and, you know, the, the smallest lift possible for anybody to, to get on and get accustomed to it because, uh, a lot of the a lot of the population that you know is using uh, is using our platform right now may be you know sixty or you know over sixty years old. So you know we just wanted to make things as easy as possible and make sure that we we resonate and are accessible to everybody. There you go. That's a good idea. Yeah. What do the soil maps look like? I'm I'm imagining that maybe one day that they could show you like um, the breakdown of the nutrients in the soil. I'm I'm not sure if it's there yet, but maybe that could be the future. So what's the the soil breakdown look like for you guys? Yeah, exactly. So, so today we're able to break down like here's all the soil types as a percentage, right? And how this how this aggregates into the actual soil index um, and the soil scores that you're getting uh, over time. Yeah, we're you know we're we're trying to just be more and more comprehensive with that data. So, you know, how can we compare that to yields that are coming out that year, and how can we uh, how can we compare that to to anything else, any of the other variables, so that you know as a as a farmer and as a landowner, you're able to very transparently see like, 
here's here's cause and effect uh, of of different things that are happening uh, on the land that you own or or farm. Yeah, that's a good point. And is that something that you maybe you guys could kind of capitalize off of in the future? I mean, I'm sure that there's like, I don't know, like a like a bear or a Monsanto. I think they got bought out by bear, though, that would want to buy that data and kind of track and see how those crops have done with the soil levels there. I mean, that's something I don't know you could diversify on and kind of build out cash rent. It's it's a it's a great question. Um, you know what we want to do is make sure that everyone feels comfortable. So we don't want to collect or share any data that people aren't comfortable with. Um, we've seen a couple of companies uh, that are that are in this industry uh, different than what we're doing, but that have used data uh, without consent uh, of the farming community and and pretty much lost trust immediately um, and really kind of ruined their name in the industry. So. We find that, you know, that's, you know, well, well, yes, that could be a potential ancillary revenue stream. It's not very important to us. Um, and, you know, our our real value is in being the platform in the marketplace to facilitate transactions between landowners and farmers. Gotcha. Well, well, that's good to hear, because I feel like that whole data thing is going on with everything, whether it's agriculture or social media. I mean, people are finding ways to profit off of data and stuff like that. So, so that's good to hear from you guys. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I think, uh, I think there's, there's a lot of companies in the industry and they're really there, you know, if you were to take a look at how are they going to make money? Like one of the big things for them would be data. Uh, and we just, you know, we're not, we're not building a business around that. And, you know, that's, it's not to necessitate using data to, to profit ourselves. It's, you know, being able to make more money for landowners, get them what the land's worth and, you know, help farmers grow their operations. And, you know, we we're building a profitable business that way. All right. That's awesome. That's a very good point. So you guys are providing such a great resource for landowners and farmers. And so I feel like you might have a really good perspective on this. What do you feel about the farmer consumer relationship? I mean, do you think it's improving? Do you think it's um, degrading a little bit? What do you think about that relationship? You know, I, I, I think there's I think there's a couple pieces to it. Uh, you know, I think what we're trying to do is more formalize those relationships. Uh, those relationships are certainly changing. So in one way, I think some of the older relationships are dwindling. Uh, you know, what, what we saw originally, and, you know, just even here's a small example, right, is a lot of, uh, a lot of these cash rental agreements were handshake deals. Um, you know, handshake deals are great uh, in those communities that worked for a long time, but you'd have, you know, someone's been running my land for 20 years and they've been paying me, you know, the same price for 20 years. And we did it on a handshake agreement. And now I feel awkward going back to them and saying, hey, it's not, you know, this isn't what it's worth. It's worth more. Uh, you know, we had a we had a scenario recently where we had somebody that filled out a cash rent estimate, you know, was an absentee landowner. They'd inherited the land. They lived in a different state. And, uh, and we said, what do you, you know, what are you getting for the land right now? And they said, oh, we did this handshake deal and, you know, we're getting $40 an acre. We're like, $40 an acre? That just sounds really, really, really low, uh, below, it just doesn't really make sense. And so we ran a cash rent estimate and it was like, I think on the low end it was like three forty an acre is what they should have oh, been wow. getting. Uh, so, you know, so what we're seeing and, you know, these, those, these are extreme examples, but we're seeing that there's just a lot of disconnect, uh, and, you know, not, to, not to say that that is the norm, but, you know, we're just seeing that, that there is a need for, for contracts. There is a need uh, for a more formalized and transparent process. And that's just not what that, what's there today. So that's, uh, that's the gap we fill. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a huge difference. $340 versus $40. <laughs> I mean, geez, that's a, that's a pretty big margin there. <laughs> that's not bad, though. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a big difference. Oh, yeah, I, I can imagine. So so what are the future plans for you guys? I know you're planning to go across the U.S. Uh, are there any, I don't know, international plans or maybe just to go to Mexico and, and Canada, just here in the continental um, North America? So what are your kind of big five to 10 year plans? Yeah, you know, right now we're, we're focused on the continental U.S. Uh, we see that there's more of enough of an opportunity here uh, to, to run the business and just expand across the U S and really, you know, build a foothold as we are the company that landowners go to when they want to, when they want to cash rent their land out and where farmers go to, to grow their operations. Um, you know, a big focus point for us right now is partnering with other land managers and land brokerages, uh, who are partnering with us to basically run their inventory through our platform. Uh, another piece as when we were coming in and said, Hey, you know, what could be an issue is coming in kind of from the outside. Um, and you have the big players that already, you know, have all of the trust of, of all of the, uh, the farmers and landowners, which are uh, land managers or land brokers. 
Um, and we said, how can we use this to be not a competitor, but actually an ancillary tool for them to actually help them? So what we have is land managers and land brokers who will put land up for cash rent. They'll put the inventory that they have up through our website. Um, and then they're able to actually drive a larger competitive bidding process. A lot of these people are are regionalized, right? And let's say as a land manager, as an example, you're taking a percentage of the cash rent and that's the money you're making on that property. So what they're able to do is go to a landowner, say, hey, we're gonna put your property up on cash rent. We're able to drive a more competitive bidding process. You know, at the end of the day, hoping they're actually getting a fair market value. A lot of times that's more than what they were getting in the past. Uh, so what? So the land manager is able to make more money. Uh, the landowners able to capture the, their full ROI. And the money that we make, we take a 4% gross lease fee uh, off of the lease, and that's paid by the farmer. So it's actually free to the land managers, free to the land, free to the land owner. Uh, and then, you know, the farmer pays that very similar to, uh, you know, a, a premium at a land auction. Gotcha. Okay. That, that's not bad at all. And I should have asked this sooner, but I just thought about it. Um, in terms of the how the land currently is, would you say most of it is farm ready or is there anything that maybe needs to be clear cut or kind of worked a little bit before it's ready to actually start producing crops? I would, I would say what we're handling is farm ready. Um, you know, we'd certainly love to work with people if they need something, uh, you know, if they have something that is not farm ready and we can help them get it to that point. But most of what we're finding today is farm ready with people who have cash rented their land in the past or done crop sharing and are now moving over to cash rental agreements. Okay, gotcha. That's very interesting. Yeah, I'm thinking because I'm thinking like here in North Florida, we've got a lot of pine trees and stuff like that. And so there's a mix between their like actual timber farms or just people's land that they just let grow for trees for years and years and years. So that's very interesting. Well, cool. Yeah, well, and, I, and there are pieces there are pieces of land, right, that uh, that have, you know, some portion of it that's a tillable acreage and others aren't. Um, you know, and, and we have those as well, right? That people are leasing out, you know, maybe it's 60 or 80 or 100 or 200 acres on a larger plot, but only that portion is tillable. Gotcha. Yeah. Have you seen a lot where you've got maybe 100 acres and maybe working that 100 acres is like five or six farmers and they're all kind of, I don't know, growing different things or what's kind of the mix going on there? Typically, we're seeing it's it's typically one farmer. Um, okay. that's working on, I, I would say, you know, I would say probably an average property that's getting listed is around a hundred acres, uh, mm -hmm. that we're seeing right now. Um, and yeah, it's typically farmed by one person. Gotcha. I'm sure that could be a little confusing too many hands in one basket. If you've got like a hundred acres and like five or six farmers going at it. I mean, that would be, I'm sure there'd be some infighting there over cropland. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, more, you know, more times than not, you know, what we're just seeing is it's just farmers really wanting to aggressively grow their operations because mm -hmm. they know, hey, we have X, we have X fixed costs that we need to account for. So, you know, we need to get as much as we can over that to be able to to be able to make a profit and be able to, you know, continue to live comfortably and, you know, in what is a pretty unstable environment. Do you imagine once you kind of grow across the U.S. that you'll have farmers, I don't know, based in Iowa that see some farmland in Nebraska that they want to go rent there and that way they can expand their operation. Do you kind of foresee that happening in the future? You know, uh, we do. Uh, you know, I think today it's at a, you know, it's at a smaller scale. You know, I think um, we had a, uh, we had a scenario the other day where um, somebody was, you know, going to be the winning bidder for a property that was, uh, that was maybe like 60 miles outside of where they lived. Uh, and the landowner, and, and also keep in mind that um, the landowner ultimately chooses who wins. So high bid does not win in the auctions. The landowner is choosing who wins. Um, and the landowner expressed some, some concerns and said, hey, they live 60 miles away. Like, that's, that's a little bit scary um, that they're that far away. And what we realized, though, is that they actually had, the, the farmer actually had like 900 acres that they farmed right next door. Uh, you know, to that property. So they were already there and they were just expanding that operation. So, you know, I think for us, it's just, um, you know, it's, it's being able to be very hands-on, pro provide a very white glove approach to the, to the landowners to make sure that we're helping them choose the, the most quality tenant farmer. Gotcha. That way they're kind of most comfortable in the whole process. Well, that's very interesting. That, 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 I guess that that's a good answer because I mean, you don't want like one farmer slowly taking over the whole cash rental system and all that stuff and expanding their <laughs> operation across the U.S. That would be a little crazy, I'm sure. Yeah, no, cer certainly. <laughs> well, Noah, this has been awesome learning about cash rent and how you guys are trying to fix this this whole aspect and make it comfortable for landowners and farmers. 
Um, if people want to learn more about you guys and if they've got some land and they want to put it up on cash rent, where can they go to kind of follow you guys and see what you're up to? Yeah, you'll, you'll go to cashrent.com. Um, there you're able to very easily, if you own a piece of land, uh, you'll type in the address. Uh, right now we're live in Illinois and Iowa. Um, we're expanding to, to, to more states to the rest of the U.S. Um, in the next six months, as I mentioned. So uh, if you don't live in one of those states and fill, you know, and fill out a form, uh, we'll let you know as soon as it's live. And we'll actually run the cash rent statements for you. So we could actually do it for you on the back end for now. Uh, but we'll, you'll be able to understand, hey, here's the range of what that land's worth. And, you know, as soon as we're live in those areas, you'll be able to put your land up and, uh, you know, be able to put it up for auction. Cool. Well, this sounds awesome. I'm super excited to, to follow this. I don't have land right now. My wife and I just bought a house and it's maybe 0.3 acres. So I, unfortunately, I don't have anything to offer. But maybe one day and maybe once you guys are grown and in Florida, I'll, I'll come back and see if I can offer anything to have a farmer come work the land or something. We're, we're, we're looking forward to it. <laughs> well, cool. No, well, best of luck. Hope cash rent kind of continues to grow and help this industry. I think this is really cool, man. Best of luck to you. And thanks for talking with us. Trevor, thanks so much for the time.